Zero Accounting Software 2023. Change account categorization to other expense. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. We're going to right click the tab up top again so we can once again duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle, we're going to go to the accounting drop down, open up the balance sheet report and then tabbing to the right and accounting drop down and we set up instead of just the normal income statement that comparative income statement if you don't have that set up you can just open the normal income statement the comparative income statement we set up is just comparing the first month january of operations and now we're working on the second month and then taking the difference or change between the two go into the tab to the middle we're going to then hit the drop down on the dates and customize those dates, bringing it on up to 2023, the end of 2023 and update it. Okay, so let's go back to the income statement and think about what would happen if we wanted to do some different categorizations and if we wanted to do something like clean up some of the accounts on uh, the, the general ledger types of accounts. So now that we've started to do some data input, we can see the accounts that we are using and we've been looking at the strategy when we do the first month of data input of first, as we do the input uh, and we add accounts, we ask, is there an account already set up by zero by default when we're adding our items, our transactions? If there is, we'll typically use that account. If there's not an account there, then is there one that's named similar that would work and then we can go into the chart of account and just change the name if not then we can add uh, a new account has been our general strategy now after a few months of data input if you go into uh, your chart of accounts and you see that there's still a lot of accounts that you are not using you might decide to make them inactive so that it'll be a little bit easier to search around with the data inputs that's one thing to consider Another thing we want to do here is just to look at this interest expense and say what would happen if I wanted to recategorize the interest expense from an expense down to something like uh, the other income and expenses down below so that it is reported down here. Uh, we can do that generally. We can change that account category and it shouldn't like throw us out of balance or anything. It should hopefully take all the transactions that we had in interest expense and just move the whole thing to a new location, adjusting the books accordingly, and in this case, bringing it down to the other income and expenses. Now, note the rationale for doing this on an income statement uh, is the same as we saw here with the gains on sales uh, investment. You might wanna look at this subtotal for the operating income as something that's normal towards normal operation. And I'm not gonna get into generally accepted accounting principles on it, although these touch on generally accepted, you know, like accounting principles, uh, ideas, right? So the idea would be, I would like to have my operating income here be from normal type of operations and then put down below those kinds of things that are not you know normal kind of operation types of things and that way it might be easier to use that income statement for projections out into the future so for example this item down here gains and losses on sales of investment or if there were unrealized gains on on sales of investments i wouldn't want to put that up top but rather down below because that's not our principal form of income that just happens to be some investments that we put on the books but it's not what we do to generate revenue. We just had some extra cash that we want to spend in the future. So we parked some of it 
in an investment. Therefore, I don't expect this to be repetitory into the future. And that's why we would maybe put it down here so, so we can have this subtotal, which is something that we expect to be kind of uh, projecting or something that would be repetitory and then easier to project. With the interest, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, the interest is only there because we're financing the business. If we didn't have to, if we didn't have to take out this loan that we had on our books on the on the on the balance sheet in order to buy the the equipment and the inventory, we wouldn't have any uh, interest here. So you might think of it as a normal kind of operation because the interest will be kind of consistent going forward if the loan terms are fairly consistent. But you can also think about it as something that, that is not really part of your normal operations. If somehow you can pay off the financing, then you won't have interest expense. So you might say, hey, look, I wanna pull the interest expense down here so that I can see my reports without the financing charge, just a pure you know, performance report uh, without the financing and then maybe have the financing down here. So let's use that as an idea and see if we can move this interest expense. So let's go to the tab, first tab, we're gonna go into our chart of accounts, which is in the accounting dropdown and go into the chart of the accounts and we can look for that interest expense now zero has a pretty neat thing where they where they list your assets so you can go here in all of the accounts and scroll down to your interest but you can also go to your uh, expenses tab and now you, it's a little bit less uh, scrolling work <laughs> hopefully to scroll down and find our interest category so i think that's pretty neat so then we're going to go into uh, the interest here so we can check that out and here's the info. So now we're gonna see if we can change it from an expense up top to, notice it doesn't have an other expense up top here, but it does have the other revenue. And so what that'll do is it'll make it a contra revenue account and it'll show, and that actually is not an, I kind of like to have just one, either other revenue or other expenses. So I don't have two subcategories down below. So let's put it into there. Let's see what happens here. Changing the account type will affect your non-published reports. Uh, well, if, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, that's cool, because it should move it up for us. And so now we put that into the income side. Let's go back to the income statement and check it out. So if I update this and see K paso con the interest. <laughs> so then it put it down here into other income and expenses. And, and so now we have this one category, which I kind of like because you can also think of it as uh, if you put it into other expenses, then you would have this extra subtotal just for other income and then another subtotal for other expenses. But this way, what happens is now you've just got this one subtotal. It's called, it's called other income slash expenses, which is kind of nice. And it groups both of them in there and the interest uh, expense portion is gonna be a negative number. And if it's income, it's gonna be a positive number. And you can see how that works from just a logistics standpoint from the software, uh, because it's an expense, you know, and it's, and uh, I'm sorry, it's listed as an income account. So it's kind of like a negative income account. So that's why it comes in as a negative number. So, so now the general idea would be that we've got this uh, net operating income and then the expenses are gonna be decreased and then the income's gonna be increased and then you get to your bottom line net income, which includes uh, the other income and expense items. Now, uh, so that's the general idea there. Now, if I go back to this first tab, just note that after, if I go into my expenses as the main category that this is applicable to, notice that zero, is actually a lot better in some ways, I think, in not just overwhelming you with too many accounts when you first set up your, your uh, chart of accounts and you set up your software. They give you kind of what you need, uh, whereas some other software, namely QuickBooks Online, at this point at least, gives you a massive amount of accounts, uh, no matter what industry you choose. And then you have to kind of go in here and delete or, or clean up your accounts. So notice you have not too many accounts to deal with here, but you still might go in and say, okay, after one or two months of data input, are there any of these accounts that I'm not using? 
and then possibly uh, remove them or make them inactive. So purchase discount, we haven't used that yet. I won't delete all of them yet, but just to get an idea. Subcontractors, you know, we haven't used that at this point in time. So again, you might take some of these and say, I'd like to uh, remove them and there's nothing in it yet. So we should be able to delete it at this point. Uh, otherwise you can archive it uh, either way. So if there was already something posted to it, then you, you would need to archive it because you can't delete the account because you're going to have something in it already. But if you haven't posted anything to it, then possibly we could just delete it. You have selected one account. This account will be removed from the contacts using uh, it as a default account. So I'm going to say, okay. And boom, right? So we could go through these, some of these like automobile, that's the business license, dues and subscription equipment rental we haven't used that one but maybe we'll use it meals and entertainment insurance uh professional fees reimbursement expense so we haven't maybe we don't do reimbursement expenses right we might say maybe i'll get rid of that one wages and salaries so if you don't have payroll then obviously uh, mileage reimbursement maybe we're not doing reimbursement of miles so maybe we say ah, i can remove that let's leave it there because i might test out some mileage stuff later though uh, utilities, telephone, bad debt. So, so if you're not dealing with accounts receivable, you might not have any bad debt, depreciation, miscellaneous, other expenses. So most of these accounts, it's not too long of a list, which I basically like that they didn't just bombard us with a ton of stuff there. So I'm just going to say, but you could still go through here and delete the ones you're not using so that when you go into the data input forms and you go into the accounts, you don't get this massive list of accounts most of which are not accounts that you need. And you could of course do the same for all the other categories, uh, but I find that zero's pretty, pretty nice. Anything that doesn't have a zero in it, you could look at employee advance. So maybe you're not giving employees advances. I could say, no, employees don't get advances. Vendor, <laughs> vendor deposit. Uh, uh, then we've got vehicles less, so pretty, pretty lean on the accounts, which I, again, I've, I approve of that. So I'll just delete that one. And then on the liability side, uh, accounts payable gives federal liabilities, pretty, pretty, pretty good lean and mean equity is another area where on some, unlike QuickBooks online, for example, they give you a ton of equity accounts that are trying to accommodate every kind of thing that you might do, like give yourself personal expenses, or uh, if you were a partnership versus a sole proprietorship versus a corporation and this and then draws and, and dividends and stuff. So that's overwhelming to me, I think. Uh, and so I think that this is nice lean uh, <laughs> equity accounts and we add to it as we go. So it's not bogging us down. So that I appreciate. And, uh, so that's the general idea. So we've just reallocated this uh, income account. Now be careful where where you do that. Obviously, if you're just moving it from like an expense account to somewhere else on the income statement, then it's gonna have a similar impact. If you're trying to change something from an income statement account to a balance sheet account, you know, that's gonna have a longer term effect because the balance sheet accounts are uh, permanent accounts and the income statement accounts are temporary or timing accounts. So just be aware of that. I'm not going to run the trial balance again because we haven't really done anything different. We just moved this number here from this categorization grouping down to this categorization grouping.